A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This quote by Lao Tzu is so simple, but so true. I'd like to congratulate you on your decision to learn the JavaScript programming language, and I wanted to let you know that I will be with you as you make your way on this JavaScript journey. Before we get started, you should download and install a text editor like Notepad++ and a browser like Chrome. You should also understand the basic components needed in an HTML document. If you need more information on these tools or HTML basics, please look for the links in the description below and come back to this video. If you're ready to start, let's take a look at what's in store. If you watch this video in its entirety, you will be able to add JavaScript code to an HTML document, test JavaScript code using a browser, and add a reference to code in an external JavaScript file. JavaScript gives programmers a language for creating interactive web pages that keep a visitor's attention, check for errors in forms, and provide a variety of other functionalities. So let's get started on our journey. To create interactive and exciting web pages, we will probably need to add some JavaScript code. There are two ways to accomplish this. We can either add code between a set of HTML script tags, or we can add a reference to an external JavaScript file within the HTML script tags. Let's first demonstrate adding code between the script tags through an example. In my text editor, Notepad++, I've created a basic HTML document. To add JavaScript, I'll type a pair of script tags. The opening script tag uses two angled brackets with a tag name between them. The closing tag is the same as the opening tag, but includes a forward slash after the opening angled bracket. Script tags are necessary for identifying that a scripting language will be used inside of an HTML document. To demonstrate the concept of embedded code, let's display an alert box. The alert function in JavaScript displays a message to the user. The alert message can be very useful for notifying the user that something has occurred in the program. Alert messages can also help programmers troubleshoot errors in their code. To add JavaScript, I'll add some space to indent the code. This will make the code easier to read. Next, we'll type the word alert followed by a set of parentheses. In parentheses, we'll type the message that we want displayed inside of the alert box. I want the user to see the message, Welcome to JavaScript. Whenever we have a static set of characters that we want displayed, we type them inside of double quotes. I'll type Welcome to JavaScript. Then I'll close the quotes. Each statement in JavaScript ends with a semicolon, so I'll move to the end of the line and type my semicolon. Next, let's save our work. I'll go to the File menu, I'll choose Save As, and I'll save this file in Documents, Professor Quinn, and the Adding Code Demo folder. I'll name the file adding embedded code and I'll change the save as type to HTML. Lastly, I'll click the save button and you can see the file name on the notepad tab. After saving our work, we can run the file by clicking the run menu and choosing launch in Chrome. 
our browser displays the alert message, Welcome to JavaScript, with a simple line of code. If you don't have the running Chrome menu selection, you can always run the HTML file from a file exploring window. You can see here, on my Windows operating system, I've gone to the Documents folder, Professor Quinn, and Adding Code Demo to show the file that we created, Adding Embedded Code. I can either double-click the file or right-click and choose the browser I want to open the file with if I have multiple browsers installed. Now that we've seen how to add JavaScript code between the HTML script tags, let's explore how to add an external JavaScript file and reference this file from code in our HTML page. To begin the process of referencing the JavaScript code in a separate file, let's create a copy of our original HTML file. I'll click File, Save As, Let's call our new file external reference. Next, I'm going to move the JavaScript code from line 9 into a new file. I'll drag across the statement. I'll cut this information. And I'll create a new file and paste the text in. I'll save the file in the exact same location as I saved my HTML file. The location of the file is very important because we will need to reference the JavaScript file from our HTML file in just a minute. I'll save the file with the name external js file. I'll change the file extension to a JavaScript file. Then I'll click my Save button, and you'll notice the JavaScript file has been saved. JavaScript files are saved with a .js extension. Here you can see I've opened an exploring window, and in the Documents, Professor Quinn, Adding Code Demo folders, I have the three files that I created. External Reference and External JS file are the two files that I'll be using in this example. At this point, I'll return to Notepad++, and the next step is to reference the external JS file from my HTML file. Inside of the script tag on line 8, I'm going to add a reference to the external JavaScript file. I'll type SRC, which stands for source, then I'll type an equal symbol, and I'll type the name of the file, externaljsfile.js. You'll notice that I've typed the file name inside of double quotes. The source attribute is being assigned to a string, and this string is the name and location of the JavaScript file. Because the JavaScript file and the HTML file are in the same folder, all I have to do is type the name of the JavaScript file. If the JavaScript file were in a different folder, I would need to add more text that specifies the location of the JavaScript file. Now I'll save my HTML file, and I'll run my code. You'll notice the HTML file runs, it references the JavaScript file, which is an external file, and inside of that file, it runs the alert function, which displays Welcome to JavaScript. When I click the OK button, the rest of the HTML page appears. If I want, I can move the text from line 10 to line 8 and add a blank line. This doesn't change the way that the code runs, but it does make it easier to read. Lastly, I'll save my work. Both JavaScript code written directly inside of script tags and JavaScript code which is referenced in an external file 
have an important role in the programmer's arsenal. JavaScript code which appears in the HTML file is self-contained and it is not prone to errors when files and folders in the directory structure are moved. While JavaScript code in an external file allows multiple HTML files to easily reference the same code. So to wrap up, We've learned two techniques for running JavaScript code in an HTML document. We've added JavaScript code directly to an HTML file inside of script tags, and we've added a reference to code in an external JavaScript file. We've also tested our JavaScript in the browser. I hope that you found the information in this video enlightening. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.